you're thinking about adding some hogs to your small farm. That's fantastic, and I hope you do. Maybe you already have some animals on the farm, like chickens or sheep or, or rabbits, and you're thinking about adding hogs. Um, I think that they're an absolutely fantastic addition to your farm. I know on our family farm, not only do the hogs give us hundreds of pounds of meat per hog, they also have some of the best manure and fertilizer that you can get. So we do just have a few tips and things that you might wanna take into consideration, but first I wanted to uh, just tell you a story about our family and uh, what led us to getting our own hogs and some of the problems that we dealt with. So a little over two years ago, we decided to add hogs to the family farm and we got uh, two males and a female. And you know, the first thing that you do when you get livestock is you have to have somewhere that you can contain them. And so we built an enclosure and the enclosure that we used, we used, let's see, so they were four by four posts that I think were about 10 feet, 10 or 12 feet tall. And so we sunk those you know, maybe a foot into the ground and then uh, secured them with metal hog panels, like a metal wire that uh, would be used to create the fence. And then we created a gate with a latch as well. Uh, for the pen, uh, we created just like a three-sided uh, little shed uh, with a sloping roof, and that's that's worked out pretty well for us. We actually built two of those. Uh, but right away, you know, we we started to run into some problems. So the the hog panels by themselves weren't really enough to keep the hogs out. Um, they were continually rooting, so like digging with their noses in the ground around the fences to dig out and then you know ram, ram against the hog panels and they escaped several times they ended up escaping and uh, it will create quite a headache when you're having to chase especially young hogs because they're they're quite fast and agile having to chase young hogs around your property because uh, they got out of your enclosure this is actually something that's very common with hogs so you need to be prepared for them to test you they will test your fence they'll test the enclosure the gates anything that they can they're very curious and smart animals and if they're able to find a weakness uh, they'll find a way to break out so we solved that problem by running two lines of electric fencing along probably about 12 inches or so off of the ground uh, so that was about head level with the hog so basically if they had tried to put their head down and root around the fence area they would touch the electric fence and get a shock and like i said they are smart animals so they learned quite quickly to recognize the electric fence so it was like a white plastic mesh with some metal wires that run through it that conduct the electricity so they recognize the white lines and they're able to recognize that that is electric and that that will hurt them so very quickly they learned it's a visual cue uh, to not do that and it was one of the best things that we have done you know likewise you're gonna need say a feed trough and pigs they of course they need a lot of water as well uh, so we built them like this feed trough that was buried like you know, 16 inches in the ground and it was heavy and uh, the hogs they ended up just sticking their head in there ripping the thing out of the ground throwing it around so I know my dad was you know he was a little bit upset having to put all that work into creating a feed trough for them and they just you know pretty much ruined it so some of the things that I've seen is create a feed trough with say cement or something to uh, keep it in a fixed location. Now, what we do is we just uh, pour their feed on the ground and uh, they, they don't have any problems with that. They just eat the pile of, of feed off of the ground. And so that is an option that you can do as well. Now water, they're gonna need two separate sources of water, right? So they have to have a wallowing hole. So that's the water that they're gonna roll around in, and it's gonna help them stay cool in the summer. and. That's just something that pigs instinctually do is they, they wallow in water and mud. So you do have to have that, but you also need to have a separate clean water source that they can drink from. And so it's gonna be the same concept with the feed trough. They're gonna to try to you know move it around and tear it up. So you're gonna need something that's pretty sturdy. What we created was basically like a square wooden frame that held half of like a 50 gallon plastic drum. And so uh, you fill that up with water and then it ends up being pretty heavy and they can't get their heads around the wood frame that we built. So that works for the water that we use. 
uh, but there's different things that you can use and I'll, I'll put some links in there as well. But you know, fast forward, once we got through those initial problems, everything went smooth after that and we didn't have to worry about the hogs escaping or, or anything. So we ended up uh, butchering three male hogs total and we still have one a female sow and she's probably going to get butchered. We've tried to breed her and um, we haven't had any luck in, in getting her bred. So that that's also another thing that you need to take into consideration is uh, being able to, to breed your hogs. So should male pigs, known as boars, uh, should they be castrated? And a lot of people think that the testosterone is going to have a negative impact on the flavor. Um, we've, we've butchered three male hogs and we didn't castrate any of them. And I have not noticed any difference in the flavor at all. So if, if you do prefer to go that route, have a veterinarian do it for you or watch as much videos as you can to learn how to do it yourself. Just like dogs and other animals, uh, different breeds of hogs, they might have different personalities and temperaments and you might have some that are more aggressive and we, we have had some that uh, one in particular that was definitely more aggressive than the other one so we consequently butchered him first. Uh, but generally they're they're quite docile but you know they're very large and so that does have to be taken into consideration so like with that large size and then pigs they do have a tendency to try to breed with other species of animals as well that can cause problems where they could harm or, or even kill other animals so so generally we recommend only housing hogs together and not with any other species of animals. And then just a, a quick tidbit on what you might be able to expect with a hog. Now a lot of people will butcher them around like six to eight months of age and we had butchered ours a little bit older. We had one that I think was around a year old. The most recent hog that we butchered was about 18 months, so he was 700 pounds. After everything was said and done, we received 450 pounds of meat from the butcher. And so the slaughter fee ended up being, or the entire fee ended up being $360 to process the hog, and that did include a slaughter fee as we did not kill the hog ourselves. So with that being into consideration, you know, $360 and 450 pounds of meat, uh, that doesn't take into consideration as much as we had spent on feed, and, and it does, it can quite, it can add up. But the biggest benefit, as I have said before in other videos, is that when you buy it from the grocery store, even if it has an organic sticker on there and, you know, it's been inspected and everything, you're just trusting that source. You don't know what that animal has eaten. You don't know what was put into that animal and a sticker night might not always be authentic. When you raise your own animals, even if you're not necessarily saving money, you can guarantee what that animal eats. You can make sure that it's fed an organic diet. You can make sure that it's not being injected full of steroids and antibiotics and growth hormones. You control exactly what that animal eats and you can guarantee that it will be organic. And that is the most important part is that you know exactly what is in your food and we're being sustainable. When you have your own small farm and say you had a fruit, vegetables and a diversity of livestock, all of a sudden you are not dependent upon anybody else for your food and sustenance. Arguably the most important thing in life is food and shelter. So if you are solely responsible for your food and you're independent and sustainable, then you can guarantee that as long as you take care of your livestock and you take care of your crops, you're always going to have something to eat. That's one of the differences between say somebody who is a multi-million dollar or say somebody is a multi-millionaire and they have a huge property and they have a mansion and all of these cars but they don't have a garden and they don't have any livestock well even though that person is very wealthy and they're well off they're in the same position as somebody who is say doesn't even have a job and they're living with their parents 
they rely on the grocery stores. They rely on other people to provide them food, and they have really no way of guaranteeing exactly what is put into their food. So there's tons of different things that this can help you with. You can be prepared for natural disasters, prepared for some of what we've been dealing with in the more recent years, such as you know supply chain issues and recalls on food and you know contaminants and metals and things getting in your food. You're able to avoid all of those things by having a sustainable farm that provides you all the food that you need. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. All of us here at the Biggest Little Market, uh, we wish you the best, and we hope that uh, we'll be able to help you build a sustainable farm for your family. Check us out in Moralton, Arkansas, at Petty Jean Farmers Market.